Welcome to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hardworking farmers. We want to share their success stories and where their challenges. We will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms on Munda Makeover! This week, we're in Chongwe district. And we're visiting a young farmer who really seems to be going places. Not only does she grow food professionally on her farm, she cooks food professionally as well. In fact, she has her own restaurant. We want to see if we can cook up a few treats of our own to help her even more. Join us and judge for ourselves who is the better chef. Oh, you're on. Yeah. <laughs> We are visiting Teresa Mambwechi Yokoma. Teresa is 29 years old and is married with two children. With a restaurant, her children, and a farm to look after, she is a very busy woman. So we want to see how we can help lighten the load. With some expert agricultural advice. Wow. Wow. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, very well, Good. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome to my farm. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now, how can we help you? I would love to have the help with the chickens okay. because uh, the first time I placed had a very huge mortality. Wow. So I'm trying to work on uh, maximizing my profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything else? Well, I would love to divert into fish farming. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. Nice. Okay, so what are we going to do next, Vikacha? I think we go and get the experts. Sounds Ready? good to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See you <laughs> soon. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. So when I heard that uh, the Munda Mikova is coming to my farm, I was very, very much excited. It's a great, great surprise on my side. Keeping broilers can be a great business. In as little as six weeks, you can go from making your investment to getting your profits, but only if done right. Now, let's see what I can cook up. Although Teresa has generally been doing really well with her broilers, she recently suffered a big loss. We think it might be due to poor ventilation. So to guide us, we've invited Luca Mzmara from Hybrid. Right, so Teresa, what are some of the challenges that you've had with your birds? Yeah, I had um, mortalities when I just started. Okay. Yeah, for instance, when I just uh, placed the 1,000 beds, right. I lost like half of it. Half? Yes. Wow, Mr. Half. Luca, 50% mm -hmm. mortality. Yeah, that yes. was too huge. I think all the profit went in there. <sighs> Indeed. Yes. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry to hear that. That, that mm -hmm. sounds like uh, it was something very serious. So, Teresa, what have you noticed about their movement or whatever it is that they do, depending on where the sun is with yes. the windows as they are? Yeah, so mostly when it's hot like this, mm -hmm. When the, when the sun is coming in this direction, mm -hmm. they move from here. They all get stuck on the door. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I've, I've noticed that. Okay. Yes. Right. When the sun is shining directly into the chicken run, they will try to avoid that. And then that delays the growth of your chickens because they are running away from the comfort zone where there's feed and water and they are not right. eating. So definitely that delays and then you end up spending more on feed to yeah, get them to market weight. I see. I see. Then we look at the construction itself. Mm. How is, what should be the design of the mm -hmm. chicken run? So like this one, a chicken run, we always thought it should be uh, east to west orientation, yes. you know, and then open sided on the sides for the sake of, uh, I mean, easy airflow across, okay. uh, I mean, the poultry house. So, construct your chicken house so that it has plenty of large windows on the north and south walls to allow the breeze to come in. Add roller blinds so that if the wind is too strong, they can be temporarily closed. Do not have windows on the east and west walls so as to keep out the heat from the rising and setting sun. 
I think now we can dive a little bit deeper into some of the facts that we found on this particular farm. Of course, your number one sensor in a poultry house is the bird behavior. They will tell, they indicate where, I mean, their comfort. You have to make sure there is water. Okay. It should be clean uh, drinking water, which you and I can drink. If you can't drink it, don't give it to the birds. Wow. And then you're also looking at the number of feeders. Are the birds eating without competition? What should the ratio of feeders be to chickens? Okay, so uh, talking of uh, 40 birds per feeder. Okay. Um, what have you noticed on this farm where the biosecurity is concerned? Of course, outside you need to do a bit more. You know, piling of uh, stuff or equipment all over can also attract uh, vectors like rodents and they like to come and nest in there. And right. then these rodents will end up bringing disease to your chicken, right? Oh, no. So all the other equipment, the, anything that you're not using, you need to pile nicely in a storeroom or somewhere mm. away from the chicken, right? And we spoke about the... Uh the litter, the, what do we call what we have on the ground here? The, the, the wood shavings. or the the, wood. Yeah, mostly the shaving is the base litter that okay. you need. Uh, bigger particles, mm -hmm. it's easy and it absorbs moisture fast. So the depth also is important. You need at least uh, five to six centimeter depth, then that uh, works for us. And then stocking density of about 10 beds per meter squared. That's where the foundation starts from. One other important aspect to note is that farmers should know, we always encourage them to do what is called all in or out. When uh, the farmer is bringing in uh, their beds, they bring everything at once and then they grow and then take them to the market out. Okay. That gives them enough time, downtime to clean up the poultry house when everything else is taken out of the farm. So all in and all out and then also that minimizes the risk of disease. That's a lot of information. Does it make sense? Well, let's break it down, down into the details. First, our Munda Makeover team needs to get to work. We need to build a storage shed for the tools and feed so we can clear the outside walls around the chicken house to avoid pests and diseases. The chicken house windows should only be on the north and south walls, so the others must be blocked. Ensure that there are no more than 40 birds per feeder. Provide clean, fresh water every day and a foot bath at the entrance. Finally, remember, have the chicks arrive together, all in, and all the birds sold together, all out. Keep the house empty for three weeks for cleaning and replacing the wood chips. Wow, this is fast work. The store shed is finished. Good work, team. The advice from the expert has been very, very, very helpful. Yes, because I learned a lot. There's some stuff that I never knew. I didn't know that putting up of the, the curtains on the other side, when it's hot, to, it, it would help them. So that's one of the major key things that I learned about. Hello, little chicken. Hey, cousin! <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you manage to cook up something good on the broilers? Mm, it, it was good fun. Yeah? And we learnt a lot. Okay. But talking about fun, yeah. I hear you like a good joke, Fikacha. Try me. Did you hear about the rooster that won the award for best bird? Yeah, <laughs> of course. He was very cocky. I like you, Cozy. <laughs> me? me? Vicky! Now, improving your chicken shed is all very well, but it needs money, right? And I happen to know Teresa wants to start building a fish pond next, so that's going to need a lot of money. But what happens when you do not have much money? Well, first you look for advice from a finance expert. So, this is what I did. Meet Robert Macheta from Vision Fund. He's going to tell us all about savings and loans. So, Mr. Robert, uh, let's talk about the issue of saving money. Why should someone save money? Why is it important? For example, a business lady like her and other business people, they intend to plan to expand their businesses. Mm. Right, yeah, so you must be Mr. Money. You have <laughs> saved a lot of it, huh? <laughs> no, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, so yeah. what's the best way of saving money? Is it to put under the bed or dig in the field and bury because I put in the pillow, you know? <laughs> when you're saving under the pillow, mm -hmm. Uh, the chances of you withdrawing that money anytime is there. Yes. So as Vision Fund, we have come up with a platform 
a digital platform uh, where you just uh, put your money in your phone and uh, send it to your uh, Vision Fund savings account. Oh. Your, um, your money mm -hmm. is going to grow. Ah. Yes, there is an okay. interest that is oh. going to be put uh, on your money. And the other advantage, it's free. So, Mr. Robertson, in the case of where somebody doesn't have enough money, can they get a loan? Sure. She can also still come uh, to see us. We give out loans. Wow. Why yeah. can't we go to our Vision Fund offices? Wow. It's just nearby yeah. yes. so that we can talk more. That's a good loan. idea. And Cozy, hey, my guy, <laughs> right on time. <laughs> Mr. Robert, hey. good Hi. to see you. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Cozy, yeah. I think you should go with them to the office and find out more about the loans while we go and fish out the expert in fish farming. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. See you. Bye See you bye. later. And welcome to the local Vision Fund office. Now, let's find out all about loans. So, um, please let us know about Vision Fund. Mostly, uh, what disadvantage people to get loans is uh, the collateral. Right. Yeah, people think uh, for them to get a loan, they need to have a title deed. Yes. But for us, we have simplified it uh, in the sense whereby most people uh, own traditional lands. Right. So those traditional lands can be used as uh, a security for and the you loan. Own traditional wow. land, yes. don't you? Yes, I do. Right. Wow. Okay. So what type of loans do you mainly give? There are two types of uh, funding right. that we give. Yeah, there is um, an agriculture loan up to the maximum of uh, uh, 12 months. Okay. But the 12 months, it has got a grace period of three months. Okay. okay. And um, we have the second one, which we call balloon loan. Mm -hmm. uh, balloon loan, it's also um, 12 months. Also, it has got a grace period of three months. Okay. And then uh, after three months, you start paying interest only. On you start paying interest for the next eight months and the ninth month, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to pay the remaining interest and the principal. Oh, wow. Nice. Yes. Wow. Okay. I would love to know exactly like what's the minimum amount of money that you can provide to right. the farmers. The minimum is 5,000. Okay. But when you are in a group, the minimum is um, 1,000. Right. And then uh, the other side of the coin, like what would the maximum be? Okay. Your capacity is yes. the maximum. All right. yeah. So if you can service a bigger loan, we can give up to one million. Are you ready to uh, give you <laughs> one million? <laughs> yes. Yes. And then uh, how is the interest rate? How do I pay? Our interest rate has never changed. It has been on 5.5% per month on a reducing balance. So and we are looking forward for uh, making a deal. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very soon. Yes. Does it make sense? Well, let's break it down, down into the details. Let's say you want to take out a balloon loan and borrow 5,000 kwacha over 12 months. At the start of the first month, you receive the 5,000 kwacha to invest. You will then have a grace period of three months without payments. Then on the third month, you will pay the first quarter interest of 950 kwacha. On the sixth month, you pay the second quarter of interest of 950 kwacha. And then on the ninth month, you pay the third quarter interest of 950 kwacha. Finally, on the twelfth month, you pay the remaining interest of 950 kwacha, plus the setup fee and the insurance fee, which totals 833 kwacha together with returning the principal loan amount of 5,000 kwacha. Your total repayments after 12 months will be 9,630 kwacha. So, Cozy, mm -hmm. I think I'm ready to go and meet up the expert in yeah. fish farming. Have you sorted the loans out? Oh, yes, I have. Okay. And without the jokes, might I add, Vikacha? There's nothing wrong with a few jokes, Cozy. Mm. Yeah? So now, tell me. What type of fish eats mice? What kind of fish eats mice? A catfish? Yay! There you go! Who have you doing stand-up in no time? <laughs> well, thank you, Vikacha. But first, before we visit the fish farm, let's hear the latest weather news. Welcome to the Munda Makeover Farming News for Zambia. Today, 
we are going to have a look at Zambia's rainfall seasonal forecast for December 2023 to March 2024. We expect varying rainfall patterns across the country. When making such forecasts, experts look at how much rain we have been getting in the past years. They then predict if the coming season will be normal, above normal, or below normal in a given area. Let's dive into the details. As shown on the map, the start of rains is anticipated in November for most regions, except for the southern areas where it is expected to start by the end of December and northwestern areas expected to start in October. During October to December, Luapula, Northern, Muchinga, Lusaka, Central, and Copper Belt provinces, including Lundazi, Chama, Kaoma, Kabompo, and Kalabo districts can expect normal to below normal rainfall. However, southern, western, most of northwestern and eastern provinces, including Mansa and Mpika districts, expect normal to above normal rainfall. Moving into January 2024, the eastern half of Zambia, including Kabompo district in northwestern province, is likely to experience normal to below normal rainfall. Meanwhile, southern, western, northwestern, and the northern parts of Luapula and Muchinga provinces, including Mumba district, are expected to receive normal to above normal rainfall. For December to February 2024, Copper Belt, Central, and Lusaka provinces, spanning across Joma, Petauke, Nimba, Mbala, Zambezi, Kabompo, Chembe, Milenge, to Mansa districts are projected to have normal to below normal rainfall. Eastern, Muchinga, Northern, Lopula, Southern, Western, and Northwestern provinces, however, can anticipate normal to above normal rainfall during this period. In the final stretch of the season, spanning January to March, most parts of Zambia are likely to experience normal to above normal rainfall, except for Ikelenge, Mwinilunga, Mpika, Kasama, Livingston, Mazapuka, Monze, Kafiwe, and Siavonga districts, which will get normal to below normal rainfall. Tips for farmers. If you are in areas that expect less rain, Use an ox drone ripper or make basins using a hand hoe to prepare your fields. Also, plant cowpeas alongside maize to provide cover for the soil and after harvest, leave the crop residues on the farm as mulch. This way, you will conserve water in the soil. Plant drought tolerant seeds and early maturing crop varieties like sorghum, cowpea or beans. Additionally, try to plant more than one crop. For example, you could have maize with an oil crop like soybeans or sunflower. This way, you will sell oil crops for income as well. Finally, plan to provide small livestock like goats or pigs with water at home in a bucket if communal water points are far away. On the other hand, if you are in areas that expect rain, Make sure to collect rainwater from your corrugated iron sheet roof by directing it into a tank and you will have water to use when the rains are over. Scout your farm for pests and diseases, especially the four armyworm in maize, and as soon as you spot them, contact your local agricultural officer for advice on the right pesticide to use. Spray your livestock against ticks, which increase during the rainy season. Also, Rotate the crow to prevent it from getting muddy, ensuring your livestock's hooves stay dry and prevent foot rot disease. See you next week on the Munda Makeover Weather News. As we discovered earlier, Teresa can serve up or she can get a loan to help fund the fish pond business she is thinking of starting. But then, she needs to make sure the fish pond will make money. So, I'm taking Teresa to meet a farmer who has just finished his first season of fish farming, Henry Ngoma, together with fish expert Michael Shaka from Zambika. So, Teresa here is a farmer 
oh, who yeah. wants to get into uh, fish farming. She's already doing the chicken farming. But I know when you're about to start any business, yes. first things first, you need to find out about the market. In fact, um, we have a deficit of fish in Zambia, not only in Zambia, but generally even as, uh, the surrounding countries as well. Mm. Therefore, the market is uh, readily available. Now, let's talk about the profit. According to the size of the fish, that I, I think the, the profit will be there. Okay, so let's talk about management of the fish. Management is very crucial in fish farming. Okay. Because unlike the livestock or land animals, mm -hmm. which you can visibly see, for the fish, you can hardly see it because it's underwater. Okay. So if you miss it on management, then you'll be running a loss. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we consider is first, the site selection, where you would want to place your fish pond. The soils are supposed to be very good, and that is uh, clay soil because it holds uh, water. It okay. will mean that you're not going to spend a lot of uh, uh, money in terms of uh, pumping uh, water into the ponds. Okay. Secondly, water quality. Water quality is very vital. Mm -hmm. As you might uh, be aware, fish breathes, uh, it gets its oxygen from the water. Mm. Once uh, that water gets bad, it will mean that your fish, one, it will not be able to get a lot of uh, oxygen, therefore it will spend most of the time, instead of eating, it will be looking for oxygen. Mm. Therefore, the, uh, the pond is supposed to be replenishing, water is supposed to be replenishing almost uh, every day to make sure that there is fresh water which goes into the pond. Okay. This helps the fish to grow faster, and bigger and also it avoids uh, diseases. Okay. So you have to be checking how is the pH in the water, how is the salinity in the water, mm -hmm. how is the acid levels in the water, and the limiting factor also how is the ammonium okay. in the water. Because if uh, there is a lot of uh, ammonium due to the feed which is not being eaten by the fish, that will cause the fish to die. Yes. And then uh, the other thing which we look at is uh, feed management. Mm -hmm. It has to be fed with the right quantity and size particle of feed. If you throw in the water big size uh, feed, mm -hmm. that fish is not going to eat. eat. So we have different mm -hmm. types of uh, feed which we have. We have uh, the, the starter feed, we have the grower feed, we have uh, the finisher feed, and these are in millimeters. Okay. Yes. And most important, also the other thing which I forgot it was uh, it is through sampling that you are going to know that, okay, my fish now it is weighing at this, and therefore I'm supposed to be giving it uh, this type of uh, feed. Mm -hmm. And from there also you can observe it, if it has diseases or if it doesn't have uh, diseases. Ah. So it is very, very important. Altogether, there are six feet sizes corresponding to six different fish weights, as you can see from this chart. If you follow this and other good management practices, you can expect tilapia fingerlings to be ready for market in just six months. Ah, so once okay. you gain that knowledge like Mr. Ngoma has done, it will be a walk in the park. Is this something you would encourage her to do? Uh, I think what she has to do mm -hmm. is to to, to, to understand uh, from the technical advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, the people can tell you the right things to do. Mm -hmm. Once you miss them, you, you fail to do your business. Exactly. It's very interesting and yes. I would love to engage myself mm. in fish farming. All right. Yeah, yeah, so we always be in touch. Yes. Okay. So yeah. if you have any problem, just a call. Just, call. just and a call. problem. So, to sum up starting a fish farm, remember, Select a site with clay soil. Make sure the water quality is good by frequent testing and check the weight of the fish every week so you can give the correct size and amount of feed. <laughs> so unfortunately we've come to the end of the day. Yeah, and, um, which story did you enjoy the most? The chicken or the fish? The fish story yeah. was so would you like us to come back? Yeah. Mm. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting you and everyone.
fantastic. Back at my farm. Very, very good time. Very, very informative moment that I shared with you guys. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. Like I said, unfortunately, that's all we have for today. Yeah. But we'll see you again next week. On another episode of Mundo Makeover. Makeover.